In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, as I mentioned, is the last Sunday after Pentecost. And the Holy Mother Church is focused in the Gospel, on the end of the world, and the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. The most important thing in life, they say, and it's true, is a good death, the salvation of one single soul. But this cannot be accomplished without sanctifying grace. And it is this that I want to speak to you about today. What is sanctifying grace? It is the seed of eternal glory. As an acorn is to the oak tree, so sanctifying grace is to eternal glory. It is the seed that when watered and taken care of, sprouts forth into the glory of the saints. That is what sanctifying grace is. It is the most important thing in this life. And our one, number one, duty to preserve sanctifying grace in our soul. And it's for that purpose to think of it, so many martyrs were put to death. Yes, we think of them as defending boldly the holy faith established by Jesus Christ. And they did that. They died for the faith. But they knew something more, that if they gave up their faith, they would lose sanctifying grace. And so you can say that they died to preserve this seed of glory in their souls. And for this purpose too, so many other saints that you read about the lives of the saints in your spiritual reading, prefer death to sin. I always think of St. Dominic Savio, 15 years old, I think he was 15 when he died, at his first communion, one of his resolutions, it was written down on paper, was death, but not sin. For him, those weren't just words, it wasn't a pious resolution that You and I are often guilty of making. We don't really mean to keep them, or at least we make them half-heartedly. No, for St. Dominic Savio, it was death, not sin. He would willingly have given up his life to avoid even one single venial sin. And St. Joan of Arc, not many people know of her beautiful prayer as she was put on trial just before she was martyred. She was asked something like, are you in the state of grace? And her answer to her judges were, well, if I am not in the state of sanctifying grace, may God restore me to it. And if I am in the state of grace, may our Lord never permit me to lose it. A beautiful prayer that we should all say each day. Sanctifying grace. It's the greatest treasure that we have in this world because it makes us friends of God. It makes us heirs to heaven. We're heirs to a kingdom, to an eternal kingdom in heaven where there are no more tears, no more sufferings, no more trials, nothing but perfect bliss. And as long as sanctifying grace is there in the soul, we are heirs to that kingdom. What a treasure it is. By guarding this grace in our soul, we guard our kingdom. It's ours for our, for our taking. We must guard it then, this sanctifying grace, with all of our might. Why? Not only because of the reasons just mentioned, but because everyone is after that little seed. Have you ever stopped to think about it? They're all out for your grace for your soul, all of hell, all of the demons and the damned souls who are there are after the seed which they have noticed in your soul. It's always under attack. The demons, they're envious, aren't they? They lost the possibility of seeing God in the beatific vision. They cannot bear to stand, they cannot bear to think that we will fill up their thrones in heaven, thrones that they should have had had they been faithful to God in their one single test. 
their thrones that they lost will, we hope, with a true Christian hope, will one day be our thrones. The devils cannot stand that. And they use all of their tools to rob our souls of grace. One of their tools is the world. And you know what the world is all about. Immodest fashions, impure entertainment. And the world is filled with with things that are capable of robbing the soul of grace in an instant, just like that. Now, perhaps more than ever before, it is difficult for a Catholic to go out into the world and not to face some very real danger of losing sanctifying grace. But although hell is trying to rob you of it, Remember, too, that heaven is after that seed, too. Not to take it away from you, but to help it to grow, to sprout into glory. Think of all that God has done to preserve sanctifying grace in a soul. God gives actual graces at every moment, graces which enlighten the mind so that we know what we ought to do, what we must avoid, Graces that strengthen the will and make us strong. That once we know what we must do, that we have the strength to fulfill it. And then, too, these graces are always in proportion to the need of that present moment. The stronger the temptation, the stronger the grace God gives us. Then, too, he instituted the priesthood to cultivate sanctifying grace. In baptism, the priest pours the waters of baptism, and then sanctifying grace is given. If, God forbid, you should ever lose that grace, then you meet the priest in the confessional. and He, he restores it once more to you. And in confirmation, the bishop makes you perfect Christians, soldiers of Jesus Christ, with the gift of fortitude to make you strong to resist temptation. Then he has given us the communion of saints. The communion of saints, what a beautiful thing. That we can pray to them, they who have been through all of the same trials and crosses that you and I have been through, and you can talk to them about it. You can pray to them about it. Above all, to our blessed lady, whose prayers are infallibly heard. If we call upon her, know that she will grant your prayer. And then to think of that little angel, the guardian angel that he has given you. Day and night, the angel is with you to preserve you, to help you guard that seed of eternal glory. But we can't let God do all the work, can we? One saint, I think it was St. Ignatius of Loyola, said, in the salvation of our soul, we must pray as if all things depended upon God but then we must act as if all things depended upon ourselves. You see that perfect balance. Pray as if it depended on God. Act as if it depended on you. So what things can we do to preserve sanctifying grace? I'll go through them briefly. First, this is the most obvious, avoid the occasions of sin. An occasion of sin is any person, place, or thing that leads you into temptation, that, that leads you into sin even. Avoid them as the plague. Secondly, know your predominant fault. I've preached about this many times over the past from this pulpit, but 80% of your sins that you commit during the day are due to your predominant fault. The predominant fault is the root cause of all of your other sins, or the majority of them. Once you find the root, you'll kill the plant, and you'll become more and more virtuous, because that is the weakest point of your soul, that fault, and it is the one that once the demons find, they will attack the most fiercely in order to rob your soul of grace. That fault, remember I've said it many times, or that inclination to evil is this. It is the fault that influences 
everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you think, it influences everything that we do. Find it and combat it. Thirdly, to preserve sanctifying grace, we must minimize distractions. Now, you all live in the world. Not You're not locked up in a monastery where there's vow of silence and all of the rest. You live in the world. You must work in the world, but not be of the world. So you cannot eliminate distraction. You have to simply minimize it. What do I mean about this? The world always provides distractions and has an apparent need for it. A distraction from what? That's the big question. It is a distraction from that silence which forces one to enter into his own conscience to think of eternity, to think of the end of a soul. Once you banish that silence, then you're on a downhill path. You must think of eternity. The reason why there is so much hustle and bustle is because there are so many men and women that do not want to hear what their conscience has to tell them. And so they go to their graves with sins on their souls. Recreation has its place. And it's even meritorious, recreation is, pleasing to God and gains you a, a greater place in heaven. But these things, these distractions, can easily devolve into a complete distraction in a bad way, especially with regard to televisions and iPods and computers, the constant communication, constant texting. And every time you get into the car, the music, particularly if it's bad music, rock and roll, or any of those things, they're always on to drown out that uncomfortable silence that you need for your soul. And this, in turn, leads to a neglect of spiritual thoughts. The more we think of God, the easier we will serve Him. Remember what Scripture says, remember thy last end, and you will not sin. But if you drown it out by all of these distractions, how many sins will then follow? It is when we fail to think of these things that we fall. When did St. Peter fall? It is when he walked away from our Lord. He went to warm himself by the fire and he was talking with other people. And sure, he probably didn't forget about our Lord, but he went away from him distracted himself with something else, and then he fell. He denied our Lord three times. If only he had stayed closer to our Lord. Fourthly, attendance at Mass. I won't pretend that you can always make daily Mass, but have it as your goal, every one of you, have it as your goal to make an extra Mass from time to time. This take, for instance, first Fridays or first Saturdays, or feast days that you like. But here, planning is the key. You must plan. Plan it, put it on your calendar, and make it work. It is a sacrifice, but it can work. How many graces are given in one single Mass? And never forget, I think it was revealed to St. Gertrude, that for every Mass that you hear while on earth, God has promised to give you one saint to be with you on your deathbed helping you to die a good death in sanctifying grace. Seventh, spirit, or rather, the next one is spiritual reading. This spiritual reading has a way of bringing everything back into perspective. Take a time out from your busy day for just a few moments and read. But don't rush through it. Read it thoughtfully. Talk it over with our Lord. And you'll make great strides in holiness. Meditation, too, is another good one, because we're forced to reflect on important truths. And they say about meditation that it is so good, such a powerful form of prayer in the spiritual life, that either one of two things will happen. Either you will end by giving up meditation, or you will end by giving up your sin. That is the power 
of daily meditation. And finally, I recommend two devotions to keep sanctifying grace ever growing in your soul. That is devotion, of course, to the Blessed Sacrament. Why not come early to Mass or stay a few minutes longer than you otherwise would to simply sit at the Master's feet? Ask Him to preserve sanctifying grace in your soul because the more you are with Him, the holier you will become. It sort of rubs off on you. And lastly, the other devotion is that of Our Lady. She is the Queen of Mercy. And she brought the Savior into the world. She does not want a single soul to be lost. So pray to her every day with the confidence, a bold confidence. And she will, of course, hear your prayers and grant you final perseverance, which is the grace of dying in the state of sanctifying grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.